facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park and have been made possible in part by Ravinia Festival, CJE Senior Life, Gand Music and Sound, Hello and welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Today we have a wonderful guest and a guest that I believe that people would like to know because there's a lot of things that's happening with our government that people have been questioning, and especially uh, what's going on with the national intelligence agencies and around with the Snowden, Edward Snowden, and all types of things that are happening. And I have the woman that will tell the answers to all. Welcome, Jill <laughs> <laughs> Rhodes. What a great pleasure. And Thank she's you former so much. Uh, Deputy Chief of Staff for the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. People have called Edward Snowden a whistleblower, and many consider him a traitor. Both are legal definitions, and neither have been determined. We need to look at all the facts and make a judgment call based on what those facts tell us, not just what the press tells us, but what those facts are truly are. And that's why, Jill, I have you on the show today, because there's a lot of, I, I read I, all, the, all the papers that I read from uh, the Chicago papers to national papers to everything, and I don't know what's true and what's not true. And I think that's why I really have you on the show, because I know you're going to tell me what really is happening and the truth. Um, also, I was very curious how you became uh, the Deputy uh, Chief of Staff for the Office of Director of National Intelligence. How does one do that? I thought that was really fascinating. I'm thinking maybe that's something I should consider doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, first, Suzanne, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's such a pleasure to be here with you and have the opportunity to speak about something that is so critical to this country and to our security. Um, just a little bit about my background, I actually began my career as a human rights lawyer and working in the human rights field. And I was a foreign service officer. And while I was a foreign service officer, um, I learned a lot about our national security world. Um, and while doing that, I decided I wanted to move into the national security world and away from the development and international human rights world. So I went into the national security world helping uh, the Department of Homeland Security with their um, Civil Rights and Civil Liberties Office, with their Privacy Office, um, and was then called to the DNI, the Director of National Intelligence, to come in as the Deputy Chief of Staff, and then move to their Head of Education and Training for the entire intelligence community and into their Civil Liberties and Privacy Office. So most of my career has been spent focusing on the civil liberties, privacy, technology, cybersecurity kind of arena, and I've had great opportunities throughout, mm -hmm. but moving into the national security world. Well, that sounds fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that also uh, you did write a book on cybersecurity, and I know um, th this is your... This is your... Um, your handbook of national of cybersecurity, which we are going to be doing another show, which I am inviting you back. Well, thank because you. I think this is really important cybersecurity. Um, we're, we're really not going to be talking as much about cybersecurity. We are and we aren't, but when we get to this book, we're going to talk about everything you need to know about cybersecurity. And I think um, we need to do that show as soon as possible, uh, maybe February. Or March. That would I will be wonderful. I look forward to coming yeah, back. That would be wonderful. And what what I want to take a look at today is um, the the press and the public uh, about 
uh, Mr. Snowden, and exactly what did he take? I mean, we hear we hear all these things about uh, Snowden, and we hear about him running. He's we, we, I don't know people. Uh, that I have sat and talked to, they say, oh no, Snowden's a whistleblower. And other people say, no, he's a traitor. So first of all, why don't we, um, what is the difference between a whistleblower and a traitor? Okay. You know? So both of those, as you mentioned, are legal terms. I think the first one, the whistleblower is really a, a person who exposes misconduct or alleged dishonest conduct or legal activity that occurs in an organization. It's a legal term. And it's his First Amendment rights, right? Well, I think it falls under freedom of speech. There's a question about freedom of speech in mm -hmm. the intelligence community, for mm -hmm. example. And again, let me reiterate that these are my opinions and not okay. the opinions of the federal government, the intelligence community, or my current employer. Um, with respect to being a whistleblower, most federal agencies and probably most companies um, have a process, an administrative process, that a person needs to follow uh, before they go public with whatever the situation is. Now, Mr. Snowden followed none of these processes. He jumped quickly. And we can talk mm -hmm. about some of the things that mm -hmm. he did and some of the steps. Treason is defined as a citizen who takes action to help a foreign government and seriously injure uh, their home nation or their parent nation. Now, I think many could say that perhaps Mr. Snowden's a little bit of both. Because with all the things that we've seen come out as a result, there have definitely been discussions across, across the federal government, across the United States, about some of the things and the implications and what the intelligence community is or is not doing. And I think we're going to talk about some of those mis mm -hmm. misconceptions about what the intelligence community is doing. On the other hand, if we would look at really what happened, I think there are lots who could easily argue that, um, that uh, Mr. Snowden committed treason. So if you want, I mean, we can walk through some of those things. Yeah, because according to the British, you know, this is interesting. The British intelligence chiefs say leaks by Snowden. This was the New York Times that I was reading this article, and I, I read everything from every paper I can get my hands on. And it said Britain's intelligence chiefs in unprecedented public testimony before Parliament said that the published leaks of secret documents stolen, and they use the word stolen, by Edward Snowden, former American intelligence analyst, had damaged their ability to keep Britain safe. That is pretty strong. It is pretty strong. So let's, if you don't mind, take a step back and let's okay. talk about what Mr. Snowden did. Okay. Okay. Mr. Snowden systematically took jobs that would give him access to data. He was a systems administrator that would give him access to data. Whether he was supposed to have access to it or not, he had access to it. Now, he wasn't working for the government. He was working for a private company? That's correct. He was working for two different contractors, I believe, while he was doing this. And this was private? They're, they're private sector contractors okay. who have contracts with the federal government, so they support the federal government. Okay. In this case, the NSA. So the government hires these private sector people? Exactly. To, okay, to work? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Let, and let make that clear. And, th and that happens quite a bit. Um, there are a lot of things that happen within government that there just are not enough federal employees. And we can talk about mm -hmm. who the intelligence community is to do the work. So they hire contractors, provide support, and all of those people have to go through the same cl clearance processes and have polygraphs. And so they go through a similar process. And they know what they can do and what they shouldn't be doing? Absolutely. Okay, so they're... And the training's provided to them, and exactly. So Mr. Snowden took positions which gave him specific access to information. He then systematically went in and chose what kind of items he was going to take and pull out um, and, and take from the NSA. It's not that he went in and said, I want this entire database, and he pulled a database. Mm -hmm. He literally hand-picked files that went from these databases. Now this we sounds kind of suspicious, too, because how did he know to do it? It's, I wonder if somebody you know, from another country had him doing this because, you know, somebody just doesn't go and does it, things on their own. I wonder what kind of information he was supposed to take. It sounds like he was possibly, um, what do they call this, a dual agent? What, what is it called? Or an intelligent? agent, right? A spy. Spy. <laughs> we or, call or, it a spy. Because I, you know, I watch a lot of the television, so. <laughs> so well, I James think, Bond type of yeah, thing. exactly. So, but what I think... Double agent, a, double agent. Well, but he wouldn't, uh, in this case, this is just technical terms, he would yeah. be a spy for another agent. Okay. For, for another country. Um, that's what it would be called. Uh, so 
he took jobs that allowed him access to a great amount of information. He systematically went in and stole that information, and he didn't do it in like a full-scale steal. He individually selected what documents he wanted to take and why he wanted to take those documents. Mm -hmm. Then he took all those documents and he left the country. He didn't follow any sort of, I'm a disgruntled employee and I don't like what's happening here. I'm going to go to my manager. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Congress. I'm, no, he took those documents and he left. And where did he go? He didn't go to mm -hmm. one of our allies. He went right to China. He went to Hong Kong, China, um, spent time in Hong Kong with the Chinese, and they went from there to Russia. These are not our allies, obviously. So these are countries that we have friendly relationships with, but also in the cybersecurity realm, which is what mm -hmm. this leads to. It's all about cybersecurity and our sources and mm -hmm. methods. Uh, these are have been considered by the National Counterintelligence Executive, which is the group that oversees all counterintelligence mm -hmm. across the U.S. government our counterintelligence eff efforts, they've identified China and Russia as the greatest threats in cybersecurity to the U.S. government and to mm -hmm. U.S. national security interests specifically related to cybersecurity. And so my question is, I, th I think you have a good question. I do not have an answer for you. But he went to China, and then he went to Russia. His lawyers in Russia are directly connected to the Putin government. His new job in Russia is a computer company that is directly linked and has been directly linked to the, the Russian mm -hmm. government. My question is, where is this coming from? There has to be more to this story than we have a disgruntled young man who and, decided and that why, he was going to take information and, 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 and run why, overseas. And why Russia? Why? I mean, they are, I mean, you think about it, I mean, they're always spying on people. They're always, you know, when he said that we're not doing the right thing, I mean, look what they're doing. And why would he go to a country like that? I can understand, say, he went to Britain or he went to another country that's right. po possibly our ally, you know, that we've been doing uh, business with for years and they've been allies to us. Why Russia? Why China? I mean, that is right. questionable. So, absolutely. And he just got a job in Russia, too, didn't right. he? Right, he did. And he's working for a computer company that has direct links to the Putin government. So, and again, I think as, as um, I've mentioned to you before, when he arrived in Russia, President Putin called this an early Christmas. Now you have to remember, he arrived several months mm -hmm. back, so before mm -hmm. the holidays, and he called it an early Christmas. Well, this is not because Edward Snowden produced things talking about how the U.S. government handles U.S. citizen data. There's no link there or no reason that, that President Putin would have an interest in that. So the question then becomes, what other information did he provide? And what kind of information? I think one of the things that Mr. Snowden has said, which um, is a, a bit disconcerting, is that he actually carried nothing into Russia with him. But as anyone who works in the IT environment knows, the cloud environment is such now that I can put all sorts of documentation into the cloud, go to whatever city, country, state, nation mm -hmm. I would like to, and pull that information directly out. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to be aware of when he says things like, I didn't bring anything with me, um, I didn't carry, I think carry is the term that mm -hmm. he used, I didn't carry anything into the country with me. You don't have to. You don't have to. There right. are lots of other ways mm -hmm. to get at information nowadays. Isn't that, that is real, that isn't really interesting. And what is, you know, we're talking about the intelligence, and we'll go back to Mr. Snowden. What does the U.S., when, when they, what is the intelligence community? What exactly is this? Who, who are the intelligence community? We're always talking about the intelligence community. Where are they? Who are they? What are they? You know, it's just, you know, it's kind of, uh, right. and I mean, thank we you. throw a lot of words around. Right. Uh, thank you so much for asking that question. That question is really critical to me because the newspaper articles I've seen over the past six months have talked about the government, the U.S. government. The government is this. The government does that. And actually, it's the U.S. intelligence community that they're talking about. And let me tell you a little bit about who these people are. So the U.S. intelligence community is made up of 16 agencies with the Office of the Director of National Intelligence that oversees the community. These are thousands of men and women from all different ages, all different political affiliations, all different backgrounds, all different education levels. They have, some have, are lawyers and, and, and medical professionals. Some don't have college degrees. Some are very conservative. Some are very liberal. They're people, like you and me, that just care about the security of this nation. 
And so they work tirelessly. And I spent many years in the intelligence community working extremely long hours to protect the United States and the interests of the United States and our national security interests. And many are dealing with life and death situations. And they work. And so it's increasingly frustrating. And they've all, let me back up, and they've all passed security clearances. And they've basically sworn themselves that if they reclassify data and classified information, they're not going to repeat it to anyone. And they're not going to go to the press and the media. And so when this comes out, we have two or three people, or there are two mm -hmm. or three people in the intelligence community who are permitted to talk and say, no, this is really what's happening. But of the thousands of people in the intelligence community, across the intelligence community, they've been sworn to secrecy. They can't say that, no, he's wrong, and what he said is wrong, and what he's do doing is wrong, because they've sworn themselves to protect the national security interests of the United States against people like Edward Snowden, who were out there to mm -hmm. expose the sources and methods of how we protect our nation. And so I think it's, it's really important that people realize these are not faceless names. They are individuals like you and I are. They have people with families and their grandparents and their children, and they have brothers and sisters. And they have committed their lives to doing work that's going to support their nation. How is things going to change because of what happened with Snowden and Manning, which uh, worked with WikiLinks, that's somebody we also need to discuss. How is this going to change the way they do their operations? What are they going to do to secure that the people that are working, you know, these fine people that you're talking about, which are, they sound like really good people, but they don't turn out to be another Snowden. How is there going to be a protection against something like that happening again. Right. Well, I think with everything, there's going to be some sort of, I don't know right now exactly what the intelligence community is doing to prevent this from happening mm -hmm. again. Um, I would surmise that there is a committee that's looking at where the, where the weak links were and how do, we, um, how do we fill those gaps and how do we address this. The greater concern, though, um, is what information do we not know? Yeah, because the press tells a lot of things. Oh, he went to Hong Kong. He went to uh, Russia. He went here. He went there. But what? What did he? You know, what exactly did he take? Because again, the British intelligence. There was a situation with Mrs. Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany. It says uh, that they want to find out what information that uh, you know that he took and what he knows about Germany, Brazil. I mean, we have a lot of countries involved here. It isn't just about the. US United States absolutely and there is a lot of things that are could and when, when you take when you do something like that you don't know how many people are getting are protected they could be they could be killed for something like this it's, it could be horrible absolutely absolutely and I think it's important to remember that let's talk a little bit go back and talk a little bit about Bradley Manning and the WikiLeaks situation in that situation within weeks of his sending his, um, the information over to WikiLeaks, the, the organization WikiLeaks, all of that information was published. It was out. People mm -hmm. could access it. Mm -hmm. In this case, um, I've heard every numbers between 50,000 and 200,000 documents. I don't know what the number of documents are that, he's, that he actually stole, but I've heard only about 500 have been exposed. And so when we're looking at that discrepancy, the question becomes what hasn't been revealed about what information he's taken and how much information has he really taken and what type of information has he taken and what are you know our adversaries going to do with that information so I think really and if that information is how we protect our national security interests and what methods and what sources we use to protect our national security interests the question then becomes what is the risk to all of those people all of those sources mm -hmm. all of those methods right. and then how do we protect those people and how do we protect our methods, or do we have to create totally new methods? What is it going to happen? And so I think those are all things that we need to start considering when, we, when there's this much information that's out there that you can see immediate ramifications. Again, I go back to, of all the things that have been in the press, do any of these amount to a President Putin telling us that this is an early, you know, that this is an early Christmas? And I'm not sure. They definitely have when great attention. When he says attention. an early Christmas, you mean what does that mean? Like a great Christmas gift for Putin. Exactly. And, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. What does the U.S. government do with our data? 
What is, you know, they collect all this data and people are thinking, oh my God, Big Brother's watching me. Everything I do is being recorded. And that's not necessarily so, is it? No, it's not, it's not true at all. Um, I think with respect to the intelligence community, I think the important thing to remember, I can talk to you about, most people are, are worried about the business records. That it's, um, in, legal, in legalese, it's Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act that talks about business records. And that would be, is the government listening to my phone calls and taking my emails? And with respect to those, let me talk to you about what the government actually does. First of all, the government never collects information, or any information that collects has to be has to have a, a counterterrorism purpose under Section 215. So there has to be some counterterrorism nexus. Next, the information that's collected, especially as it relates to U.S. persons, that's U.S. citizens, resident aliens, and companies that are, have presence in the United States, they're all U.S. persons. Um, the information that is generally collected is metadata. That would be a phone number. It is not, or an email address. It is not the content of that information. Once that information is collected, it's stored in a secure database. Um, and then through what is called the FISA court, and we can talk about this at another mm -hmm. time, but they have a special court order that will allow them to review those numbers and only can review the numbers of U.S. persons if there is a, a national security counterterrorism link to a foreign entity or foreign terrorist organization. So we're looking at multiple levels. So the analysts who review this data have to have special training in how to review this data. When they find, if they find numbers and they find links, if there's a number that they haven't discovered before, mm -hmm. they need to go through another formal process to do any additional research on that. Anything uh, to do any additional research on that specific number and specific links. Anything that is related to U.S. persons, other than it has to be what is called minimized. So if they find data that's related to you, uh, Suzanne Kahneman, they say, we have to minimize this data to the minimal amount necessary to look at counterterrorism issues. Everything else that doesn't have a link like that is purged, gotten rid of, and there's a certain t not a limit of time in which we can hold these. Please remember, and this is critical, that the 9-11 Commission held that one of the greatest criticisms to our intelligence community was the fact that we could not link al-Qaeda cells in Yemen to the terrorists in the United States because we didn't have the capacity to link those numbers. And now we do. And now we do. And that is what mm -hmm. this search is about. And so it's protecting it. When, when it, it I have a quote from a David Kirkpatrick, author of The Facebook Effect. He said, the exposure, the exposure of NSA spying is eroding global trust in American brands. And it said, short-sighted spies have undermined the very economy they are supposed to protect. What do you think about that? You know, how could that possibly be? The NSA spying is eroding global trust. We need that because otherwise, you know, like you said, uh, you know, we're not protected. We're, we need to be protected in the right. world that's, you know. I think, I, and, and that's the bottom line. We need to protect our national security interests, right? There have been time and time again that there are reports about the Chinese breaking into our computers, breaking into DOD, trying to steal, right? and. Thefts of um, thefts uh, of architecture of some of our weapon systems, things like that, that are happening all the time. We need to find ways that we can protect our nation from those nations and individuals and groups of individuals that want to harm us. Well, listen to the Boston, you know, the Boston Marathon. Uh -huh. They were able to get through. They must have had some links that they could trace the the person back to. Remember, they finally Absolutely. got who. I mean, without that, we we weren't able to find who those people were that blew up the you know that uh, at the Boston Marathon. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I mean, people don't realize. I mean, we're so worried about oh, somebody's going to listen in our conversations, which is not true. They're looking for specific things, and they could actually. I mean, they're there to save our lives and to protect our lives. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. And I think it's also, and we'll talk about this more in the cybersecurity panel, but I think it's also really critical for people to remember that the government, and, and people are concerned about what the government can do with your data and how they use the data. And I hope I explained a little bit how that happened. But we also have to look at what the private sector is doing with our data. I'm much more worried about what Facebook mm -hmm. is doing with my data. 
and what and what other organizations when I link on to them and they pass my data and my data goes all over and my friends right. data then I am about where the government is and what the government exactly, is Exactly, because I find people on my Facebook, I don't even know who these people are. I mean, I, I find them living in other states. I have no clue because they're a friend of a friend of a friend, and I have no idea what they're doing with information that I may be sending to somebody locally that I know. It seems to everything pops up all over the place. Absolutely. And similar to the fact that those are legal in the private sector, one thing I want to mention about all of this discussion that's been going on around NSA and the intelligence community is every program that, that Snowden, Mr. Snowden has exposed is a legal program and has been a legal program. And it's monitored by all three branches of the government. And the people who are doing the work on these programs all have training in how to ensure the legality of it. it is, there's oversight by Congress, there's oversight by the White House, and there's oversight within the intelligence community through inspector generals and other means to ensure that these programs are, are um, are legal and um, are um, follow follow the law and, and move to the letter. Well, why did Snowden think they were illegal? What was his thinking or Manning or why did they want to expose our government? What was their? What, what, what was their <laughs> I wish I knew that. What, answer. Was, what was their payoff in this? I mean, people, you know, it's like they're getting paid off in some way. I mean, they're supposed to be whistleblowers, but it doesn't sound like whistleblowers. I mean, here's Manning, who uh, is part of, you know, he's part of our government. I mean, he's he's a private in the army. Absolutely. And how do these people get into these things? And what makes them think that it's so illegal what, the, what we're doing? We're doing, I mean, if they really look at it, they're doing it to protect our government. Our government is doing it to pre protect the people. That's what I see. Why are they turning it around and thinking it's so illegal and so bad? And, and why, why, you know, the other thing is, why does why does uh, Snowden think what's happening in Russia is is so fair and so positive? So, it doesn't make it doesn't <laughs> make any sense to me. It's just so, um, you know. I wish I knew the answers to those questions, but but I don't. I think that there will always be within the cybersecurity realm. That you always have to worry about insider threat, and that is what a disgruntled employee internally who wants to do harm to either your company or, in this case, the U.S. government. And so that is always a threat in every organization, um, whether it's you're working in the cyber world or you're working in, in the federal government world. I just think it is a threat. And so the question actually is more than, more than why are they doing this, how do we prevent it? Or how do